The following review can also be found at sidemissionblog.co.uk. It's not good, but it's an improvement, somehow. Quick disclaimer before we start here, I did beat this game in one sitting and at the time of recording that was less than 24 hours ago. So anyone that's ever watched one of these, you know the common specs of the 7700K and the 1080 and the 16GB of RAM, which as you know, would be completely overkill for a game that was released in 2010. But that's the specs anyway. Needless to say, we won't really be going over the performance. Overview! The Sniper Ghost Warrior is good, but I feel I should rephrase that and say that it's actually better than Sniper Ghost Warrior 3 and Sniper Ghost Warrior Contracts. In this particular iteration of the game, you are a few different people. Initially, you're tasked with the assassination of some corrupt leader in a country. Clearly, if that's mission 1, this doesn't go too well. Pretty sure I hit the guy, but you know. Regardless, he escapes and you skip chase, and this is where the main act loop, as we'll call it, comes into play. Your spotter gets hit, you decide to cover him in his evac, and you get left behind. This happens a lot. Now you, as a character called Tyler, have to get to an evac in a different location. Whilst doing this, you're also tasked to help free a POW from your military force. And this game is pretty forgetful, so I'm going to gloss over a few little details. But take this as your spoiler warning for a 10 year old game. In one particular part of the act, you overwatch a team assault in the town to take out a drug dealer. This is, however, where that motif shows up and it does not go well. However, this then allows you to play as that team before they show up, as they show up, and after they show up on that failed assault, which is a nice touch, and this does happen a few times throughout the game. Let me hit you with a quick TLDR. This game is essentially eating dry, stale bread. It's something, it's not good, and it's not bad, but it's something. Story. Now, I said this game is forgettable, but it does have a few little gameplay loops, and that's not entirely bad. You play as Tyler, and he is the titular character. You play as him a lot, but not all the time. Now, you're going to take out this bad guy, and it goes poorly. You then try to evac, and it also goes poorly. How fucking incompetent is this military? Regardless of that, what follows next is just trying to make it to the next save point in order to make, like, Fred Flintstone and Yabba Dabba do one. This little long gone quest of yours takes you through some fun segments like forced stealth in small villages, par for the course when it comes to a linear FPS game. You're gonna assist in a little drug bust, guess how that goes. Like stated prior though, you get to play as other teams during that mission, and then you go back to Tyler to finally evac. You then get to do a little boating section in the jungle to blow up some party snowfields in evac. Guess how that goes? Wrong answers only. After a little busy work, you obviously get out. You then go to the town to steal warhead plants for a nook. And remember that guy you saved? Well, totally at a left field, he betrays you. Like, you kinda see it coming when you're handing him the disc. Nothing before it tells you he even is contemplating actually doing this. It's just so far out of left field, it's like he just thought of doing it, and he did it. Fucking CI games. You then assist some rebels who save you from being executed and have to go through another one of those forced stealth segments in order to find the guy who actually stole the disc. Then, once you get the disc, you fucking throw him off a bridge. Now, in the event that you were thinking, wow, that's act one? Nope, that's act one, two, and three of four. This next one's actually really simple. You just go around weakening that rebel army a little. You know, the bad ones, not the good ones. You sneak into a compound, get some plans, leave, kill a high-ranking general, steal a truck and blow up a bridge, assault a mine and free some prisoners, kill the guy you didn't kill in level one. That's simple. And I honestly expect nothing less of CI games. It's actually endearing at this point. Mechanics. So I don't feel I really should need to go into too much detail about the mechanics because it's simply just everything you know from Sniper Elite in the previous, or rather concurrent games in the Sniper Ghost Warrior series, just put them in their infancy. You have your standard bullet cam on the good kills, but it's not as brutal or as slow as it is within the subsequent games. But there is some dodgy wind to go with it, which is also very, very fun. It's all just really standard stuff for the standards of today. Guns, however, there's a good talking point because Sniper Ghost Warrior really should have been called Assault Rifle and Single Fire Ghost Warrior or Marksman Rifle Ghost Warrior because nobody, absolutely nobody in this universe can fire 10 rounds of a 50 cal rifle in under 3 seconds, but accuracy be damned, Tyler can. He's just fired that sniper rifle like it's a fucking M4. <sighs> fucking when did this? Mind you, for a gun calling itself a 50 cal, it ain't very beefy or very good. The guns in this game are actually one of the worst aspects of a first person shooter. The pistol, however, is fucking S tier. Impossible to aim, but when it decides it wants to land the shot and actually hit, it's amazed. Got it. I'm on my way. Make it fast. 
Don't stop. Takes two shots, dies. Now, on the occasion you do get to use a fully automatic weapon, the iron sights in this gun are good and the guns have recoil and that's when the iron sights actually get bad. The guns also do this thing where they're absolutely useless. Yeah mate, just soak up 60 rounds of 556 whilst wearing your wife beater. Clearly fighting terminators here. This also includes their accuracy and how far they can spot you from. Okay, I think you lost them. Good work, Alpha 9. I think you lost them, as they are all standing there, okay, waiting for me. Good work, Alpha 9. Leave the area. You don't need to engage at this point. Move up the river to avoid a firefight with the guards. Perfect. On my way. They're just waiting there. Explain how. Okay. Sometimes. On the chance that they don't cut you down like the lumberjacks cutting down pine trees, the AI couldn't hit the side of a barn with a bulldozer. And just in case you take one too many hits from these damn terminators, you can hold up to 5 injectors and if your health goes below 20 points, it regenerates back up. But the screen does need a wake up though because I died so many times at sub 20 HP because the visual indicator just didn't bother to show. Gameplay? Gameplay should be exactly what you expect from hearing the previous segments and reading the title of the game. However, this game does seem to funnel you into a loop of not actually sniping and like I said, the pistol is a beast. AI is a bit off though. Killing one guy can alert a whole base instantly or the guy standing right next to him just goes, oh clearly you're away for a nap mate, good tactical choice. For all three segments I can actually remember you will do some obvious sniping where all you can do is actually sniping and that is the main focus. Again though that's, uh, that's very few and far between. You also can't seem to pick up any other gun unless it's a derivative of what you're already holding in your hand. This means it's the default sniper or a Dragunov. Literally the only two snipers I found. You also get to choose between an M4 and some weird 10 round AR rifle. Neither are particularly good and I actually found myself using, you guessed it, the pistol more than the actual guns simply because of the recoil. It's not that you can't handle the recoil but they kick like an absolute mule and grenades are also extremely useless. The enemy just seems to run away from them as soon as you even get a whiff of one in the air, but when they throw them at you, you just get a little indicator and it doesn't actually tell you exactly how close it is to you, it just says, ah oh, yeah there's a grenade in the vicinity. Most of this game seems to be either running away from large groups of enemies or killing those large groups of enemies with mandatory self sections and they're just going to break up the flow of that and there's about one of them per act and the FAAI can make this either very easy or frustratingly hard and to be honest I find it hard to talk about this. This game is just dull, boring, repetitive and it ain't winning any awards anytime soon. I mean if you really want to talk about how janky it is, just look at this clip of me fucking firing a mounted machine gun. They don't overheat or anything, they just kinda keep going. So let me break down some numbers for you, I'd give the story a 5, I'd give the mechanics a 5, but I'd give the gameplay a 3, meaning an overall of 4.3, because this game is just so average in every way bar the gameplay. For a game that came out in 2010, it's just lacking. In 2010, gave us games like Bioshock 2, Heavy Rain, Darksiders, Alan Wake and Metro 2033, just to name a few. CI Games had 8 years of development before releasing this game, and compared to Avalanche Studios, who in 2010 also brought us Just Cause 2, it's really hard to recommend this game, because it already looks dated from the moment you play it but I recommend it. Why? Yeah, it's shoddy, buggy, boring, horribly paced and easily dated, but it ain't slow, and if I didn't go and answer the door or fart around with some streaming software, it'd be an easy three hours. So congratulations, CI Games. I recommend this game over the better looking Sniper Ghost Warrior 3 and Sniper Ghost Warrior Contract. Congratulations. On the occasion you do actually get to use a fully automatic weapon, the iron sights are really good and the guns do have recoil and that's when the iron sights get bad. Fuck yeah.